some people talk about seven stages of Alzheimer's and that can get a bit confusing. So it's easier to divide it into three groups, three stages. So you have the early or mild stage, then you have moderate Alzheimer's and then late or severe Alzheimer's disease. So I don't want you to panic when I talk about some of these dementia signs because naturally as you get older your eyesight may get worse your joints may not be as flexible as they used to be and in the same way you can't expect a 70 year old brain to work the same way that a 20 year old brain works so i'll talk about the sign of dementia or alzheimer's and then i'll compare that to what you expect to see as a normal sign of getting older so people hear dementia or Alzheimer's and they think, oh, it's just a problem with memory. But it's really so much more than that. For example, one of the earliest signs of Alzheimer's disease is a change in handwriting. And the handwriting becomes shaky and messy, partly because of a problem with controlling the muscles of the hands. But also there's a degree of confusion there as well. So you'll find that as the disease gets worse, the handwriting also gets worse. Another early sign you might see is changes in posture, in the way you carry yourself and in the way that you walk. So the walking may become very slow with short steps and dragging of the feet, what you might call a shuffling walk. The arms may also become stiff and fixed at the side instead of swinging naturally the way they do when you walk. So a big part of Alzheimer's disease is definitely problems with memory. And in the early stages, this tends to have a particular pattern. So you might be able to remember things that happened a long time ago, like maybe when you were a child, but you have a problem remembering things that happened very recently. You might be having a conversation and you keep asking the exact same question over and over again because you've forgotten that you've asked it already or someone might tell you their name and you forget it almost immediately. Another thing is that you might see someone that calls everyone love, you know, hello love, hello darling, hello precious, and they're doing that to cover up the fact that they can't remember anybody's name. And then you might find that you need to rely on post-it notes and reminders or members of your family to help you remember the things that you've always remembered by yourself without any help. On the other hand, if you've always used lots of post-it notes and reminders and lists and apps to keep track of the things that you need to do every day, like me, or maybe you forget a name and then later on it comes back to you, that's perfectly normal. Closely related to this kind of memory loss is that you might find yourself accusing people around you and members of your family of hiding and even stealing your belongings. And this can happen if you put your things in strange places, for example, you might put your keys in your fridge. We all lose things. Say, for example, you misplaced your phone. Normally, you'd be able to say, OK, I was in the bathroom, then I went to the kitchen and then I went outside. And you'd be able to retrace your steps and work backwards and hopefully eventually find that thing that you're looking for. And still talking about memory, you might have problems naming everyday objects. Like instead of saying chair, you might say that thing that you sit on. Or you might be having a conversation and you stop suddenly because you can't find the words to finish your sentence. On the other hand, if you have trouble finding the right word occasionally while you're talking, there's nothing wrong with that. And another common problem is that you might get lost in an area in a place that you used to know very well and have trouble finding your way home. And related to this is that you might have what we call confusion of time and place. So you might not know whether it's morning or night. You might think it's summer when it's winter. Meanwhile, we've all occasionally forgotten like what day of the week it is, but eventually you figure it out. Next, you might have problems with normal everyday activities that require you to do things step by step. For example, you might have trouble shopping for groceries or following a recipe to make a meal or making a reservation, a booking or paying a bill. 
So maybe once in a while, maybe you're cooking and you forget to add salt or some other ingredient once in a while, or perhaps you're late with one or two bills because you forgot them. Those are not signs of dementia. So moving away from problems with memory, in the early stages of dementia, you may start to see some really obvious signs of change in personality. Someone who used to be very outgoing and social may suddenly want to start staying indoors and not wanting to talk to people. Or you may see someone who starts spending large amounts of money or becomes very, very irritated by little things. On the other hand, as you get older, you might like to have things arranged in a certain way in a way that you're familiar with and you've grown comfortable with. And when someone comes along and messes it all up and disorganizes everything, you get annoyed. That's not dementia. Now these next two signs, people tend to group them with moderate Alzheimer's disease, but you can see them in the early stages as well. The first of these signs is believing in things that aren't real. So you might think that the police are following you everywhere you go, or you might think that members of your family are trying to poison you and get rid of you. Closely related to that is that you may see, hear and smell things that don't exist. And then to crown it all, if you're in the early stage of Alzheimer's, you may insist that there's nothing wrong with you, that you're perfectly normal. And there are two possible reasons for this. First is that you might not even realize that you're having these early signs because some of them are easier for other people to notice in you than for you to notice in yourself. Another possible reason is that if you admit to having these problems, then concerned family members may start checking up on you and telling you where you can go and what to do and what not to do. And even though it's for your own good, it's for your own safety, if you're the kind of person who's always been very independent and doesn't like other people controlling them, you may feel like these people are poking their nose into your business and you might find that very frustrating. What I'm going to say now is very, very important. Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia don't have any cure. There are certain conditions where you may see signs that look like dementia but the difference here is that these conditions can actually be treated or reversed and all the dementia-like signs will disappear. Usually when I say anything about seeing a healthcare professional, people tune me out. But it would be such a shame to suffer thinking that these signs that you're seeing are due to dementia, due to Alzheimer's, when in fact they're being caused by something that can be treated or reversed. So let's talk about some of these conditions where you might have signs that look like dementia, but really aren't. Let's start with drugs. More than half of people over the age of 65 are taking at least four drugs that were prescribed by their doctor every single day. And some people are taking a lot more. And this causes two big problems. The first problem is that some of these drugs actually cause these signs of dementia. And examples of these include sleeping pills, medicines that you take for depression, drugs for allergies, some drugs for high blood pressure and heart disease, drugs that prevent convulsions, drugs that calm you down, that's sedatives, medicines that you might take for irritable bladder, and statins that we're using to treat high cholesterol. The second problem is that the higher the number of medicines you're taking, the more likely you are to have some kind of reaction to them or for them to react with each other. And unfortunately, if you're taking a lot of strong medicines, you might find that some of the medicines you're taking are actually to control the side effects of the drugs that are actually treating your disease. And a lot of doctors don't realize that Older patients are much more sensitive to a lot of these drugs that we prescribe compared to someone who's in their 30s or 40s. If you're taking or a close family member is taking a lot of prescription medicines every day or is taking one of these drugs that I mentioned before 
that may lead to signs that look like dementia, you need to find a healthcare professional who has the time, the patience and the knowledge to look through the long list of drugs that you're taking and see which ones you still need, which ones can be changed for something that has fewer side effects or that can have the dosages adjusted. And you may find that with this, that some of these signs may actually disappear. If you're depressed or you're going through a lot of stress, or perhaps you've lost someone close to you and you're grieving, you may see some of these signs. An untreated infection like a urinary tract or chest infection can cause some of these signs in people who are elderly. So when the infection is properly treated, then the signs disappear. If you're not getting enough sleep, if you have attention deficit disorder, if you have problems with your thyroid, in some cases, if you're not getting enough vitamins like your B vitamins, you may see some of these signs. A brain tumour or a collection of blood inside the skull can actually press on the brain and cause signs that look like dementia. And once they're removed, then usually the brain goes back to normal. So let's talk about conditions that can increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's. And definitely some people have a higher risk than others. Some of these risk factors are things that you can control and some of them you have no control over whatsoever. If you inherit the tendency to develop Alzheimer's disease that's passed down from your parents to you, then you're more likely to get it later in life. Also, if you're black, if you're Hispanic, you're more likely to get Alzheimer's later. Now, you can see that these three things are things you have no control over. You can't control your race. You can't control what your parents hand down to you. And yet, it's not 100% certain that if you fall within these three categories that you will get Alzheimer's disease. You also have a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's if you don't get enough sleep. We're not talking about one sleepless night, but if it is normal for you not to sleep, then your risk is higher. If you're obese, if you have high blood sugar, high blood pressure and heart disease, your chances of developing Alzheimer's are much higher than people who don't. These last four risks have one thing in common and that is insulin resistance. And in the next video, I'll show you how to reverse it.